One of the best things about blockchain is that you can create crypto arbitrage trading bots that print money while you sleep. In just the last seven days, developers made over $4 million with this strategy, all 100% verifiable on the blockchain. But how can you create one of these? And how can you make one that's actually profitable? Well, that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who's done this. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how to make a profitable arbitrage trading bot in 2026. So if you clicked on this video, you probably already understand what arbitrage is or at least have an idea. But basically, it's buying cryptocurrency on one exchange and selling it on a different exchange for a profit in real time. OK, so you don't want to do this on centralized exchanges. OK, most people think I'm going to buy some Bitcoin. I'm going to buy it cheap on one exchange and send it to another exchange and then sell it for a profit because they're always a little bit out of sync. But there's a problem with this. By the time you buy it on one exchange and move it to the other exchange to sell it, you know, the price could have moved on you. All right. So you don't want to use centralized exchanges. You want to use decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, PancakeSwap, et cetera, et cetera, to do this. So why? Well, basically, they don't require any of your own money to trade because you can borrow it for free with flash loans. And number two, you can't actually lose any of the money on your trades or you can't lose any of the money that you're borrowing because the bot is powered by smart contracts and the blockchain won't let that happen. OK, so how can you do this? Well, I'm going to break down each step in this video. But if you want to jump past all of that and actually steal my arbitrage based trading bot, then make sure you hold your spot for the trading bot masterclass next Thursday on January 22nd. Inside, I'm going to give you away my arbitrage based trading bot and show you how to set it up step by step. So trust me, you don't want to miss this. Hold your spot with the link down below. All right. So step number one is that you want to pick the blockchain that you're going to perform these arbitrages on. OK, so that's the important thing to understand. If you're going to be doing arbitrage, you need to do it on the exact same blockchain. Currently, at the time of this video, there's not really a good way to do cross chain arbitrages between different blockchains. So when you pick a chain, you want to you know, satisfy a certain amount of criteria. Number one is it needs to have a lot of tokens, you know, different cryptocurrencies you can actually ARB. Number two is it's got to have a lot of different exchanges you can arbitrage between. Number three is it must support flash loans. And number four, you know, it must be EVM compatible so that you can take the same Solidity code and use it on multiple different blockchains. OK, so if you look at a website like DeFiLlama.com, it's going to help you look at this different criteria. Uh, obviously, the blockchain with the most activity on top of it, the most TVL, all the type of stuff is Ethereum. OK, but you can see other EVM compatible blockchains like Tron, you know, Binance Smart Chain. You got the other Ethereum layer twos like Optimism, Arbitrum, Base, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so step number two is you want to pick the different exchanges that you're arbitraging between. Start with two, and they need to be decentralized exchanges, okay? They need to actually run on the blockchain where the backend is powered by smart contracts. So I'll give you two examples. So in this case, let's talk about Uniswap and also PancakeSwap. So why did I choose these? Well, on the back end for like Uniswap version three and PancakeSwap is they basically use the same code. OK, it's a little bit different, but the important thing is that the interface of those two exchanges is the same. What I mean by that is when you call the function to actually perform a swap, it's the same function on both exchanges. So if you can code for one, you can actually code for the other. Another reason for this is they have lots of liquidity. So there's lots of money on these exchanges. They're high trading volume. There's lots of different pairs. So you can trade lots of different tokens on there. And they're on many different networks. So if you can implement this strategy on one network, you can likely move it to a different blockchain as well. So you don't have to take my word for it. OK, you can actually go look at uh, the Forks tab on DeFi Llama. This is basically a place where you can see uh, what applications have been copied and use the exact same code base for other different blockchains. And so you can see or different applications and you can see that like basically Uniswap version three has been forked 200 times. OK, so there's 200 different exchanges basically that use the exact same code base. All right. Now, they're not all going to have activity on them, but there's still going to be plenty that do. Now, once you've picked the different exchanges that you are going to arbitrage between what you're going to do is you are going to monitor all the trades for the specific tokens that you're watching on that exchange. And every single time a token trades, the price is going to change on that exchange. And you're basically going to monitor that with the events on the blockchain or whatever method that you want to. And you're going to look to see if the price fell out of sync enough 
for you to buy on one exchange and sell on the other. If you can and you can cover it with the gas fees, then you have a profitable arbitrage opportunity on your hands. And there you go. All right, step number three is to pick the tokens that you're going to trade between or a trading pair, okay? So people wonder, how can I research tokens for arbitrage purposes? Well, one simple way is to just look on a website like Etherscan and look at the token tracker, okay? This is going to be all the top tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. Again, this is just one blockchain. You can rinse and repeat this for other blockchains. But basically, you know, there's almost 2 million token contracts uh, on Ethereum. There's, you know, almost 3,000 with, you know, okay reputation or better. You can simply search them by the biggest ones or sort them by the biggest ones at the top and then go from there. Another way is to use some type of tool that actually explores DEX trades and trading volume and new tokens, all that type of stuff. There's like DEX screen or BirdEye, GMGM, whatever you want to use. It doesn't really matter. As long as you can basically look for a different exchange like Ethereum, I'll show you it here on DEX screener, uh, look at all the tokens, all right, sort by volume and then just pick a token, right? So chain link at the top, you know, $8 million in trading volume, um, a, a lot of volume here, right? So what you can do is then search it, all right, chain link. And now you can see that this token is in fact traded on multiple different exchanges on the Ethereum platform alone, but it's also deployed to many different decentralized exchanges and other networks. So basically if the same token is traded across lots of different venues, then there's probably gonna be arbitrage opportunities available. So another point to mention uh, when you're picking tokens is that you must use ERC-20 tokens for this particular strategy. So what does that mean? Well, basically, you know, Ethereum lets you create um, tokens without creating a new blockchain on top of the same blockchain. And that's what, you know, ERC-20 tokens are. They're smart contract power tokens. ERC-20 is just the standard for how these tokens should work. All right, basically, you know, you can see it's got a name, symbol, decimal, total supply, and it implements the functionality that you need for trading, like transfer and transfer from. That's basically what happens whenever things get swapped on DEXs. It's just transfers in two opposite directions, okay? Now, some people ask me all the time, like, can I arbitrage Bitcoin with this or Ethereum itself? Well, you can't do that directly, but if those blockchains support wrapped versions of those in ERC-20 versions, like wrapped Bitcoin or wrapped Ether, then yes, you can do that. All right, so step number four is to pick a flash loan provider, all right? So, so again, if you're not familiar with flash loans, basically this is where you can borrow millions of dollars of cryptocurrency for free as long as you pay it back in the same transaction, okay? So basically whenever you're doing trades, it's all in one go, all in one transaction. So if you can borrow the money, do the trade and pay it back, you know, there's no issues there. There's no way that you can lose the money. And even if you try and you accidentally lose the money, well, the, the transaction won't actually go through in the blockchain and therefore it's 100% safe. So if you don't know what, you know, uh, Flash loan provider to pick, I recommend Balancer, all right? So what is Balancer? Well, it's a liquidity protocol on top of you know Ethereum and other blockchains. Basically, it has an AMM as well, okay? But its flash loans are, are my favorite, all right? So why is that? Basically, it's the easiest to set up, all right? Here's the library that you basically just put into your smart contract. It's a simple copy and paste job with the additional configuration of how your contract works, but it's, it's really easy to get started. All right, there's no fees, so it's completely free to do flash loan from Balancer. I mean, you have to pay gas fees to the network, but Balancer doesn't charge you any extra money. All right, and it's also multi-chain, so it works on multiple different blockchains. Not cross-chain, you can't do it between two different blockchains, but you can implement the same strategy on different blockchains. All right, so step number five is to create a smart contract that implements the trading functionality. Okay, so what's it going to do? Well, basically, it's going to implement the flash loan like I just showed you here. It's going to take out a flash loan, all right? It's going to trade the token on two different exchanges that you've implemented, and then it's going to repay the flash loan whenever it's done, and then also, of course, give you the profit, all right? So, you know, earlier I said, you know, pick the same coding interface on different exchanges. I talked about, you know, Uniswap version three, all right, and also PancakeSwap because they use the same coding interface, and if you can code for one, you can code for the other. So uh, this is what it would look like. Basically, what you want to do is isolate the actual trading behavior for the specific exchange that you're trying to learn how to trade for. So I'm just using Uniswap version 3 as an example. So the question you want to answer is, how do I implement in code how to do a swap on Uniswap? And then when I figure out how to do that, I can do the same thing on PancakeSwap or a similar exchange that uses the same interface. Okay, you just do it for one and then do it in the opposite direction for the other. So for Uniswap version three, here are the documentation. Basically, this is how you do a swap. Use the exact input single function call, okay, on the swap router. And uh, this takes some parameters, which you have to set up right here, okay. Um, and then basically, you just do the exact input single params. You put in like the token in, uh, token out. So this is die or weath, uh, any pool fee that might be there. 
uh, the recipient of the trade, which is you, message that sender, uh, the deadline, which is the block timestamp, amount in, amount out, and then all the other stuff. All right, step number six, and this is the final step, is to create a searcher bot that watches for the opportunities in the marketplace and then actually executes the trades. So once you've created the smart contracts, all right, you actually need a bot to finish off this entire process, okay? A smart contract doesn't act by itself. So if you put your trading contract on the network, it's not going to look for arbitrage opportunities. It only knows how to perform arbitrage opportunities. So you need a bot to tell it what to do, okay? So basically, um, you see the bot here, it talks to your smart contract and the contract orchestrates everything else. All right, so how do you create this bot? Well, one way is to use Node.js, okay? So what is that? Well, basically, it's a way to run JavaScript on your computer because JavaScript, you know, natively only runs in your web browser and you need Node.js, which is a runtime environment to let you write an app or a bot on your computer so that you can, you know, write this stuff in JavaScript to watch for the trades and then call the smart contract, okay? So um, on top of that, you know, your app should use some method to connect to the blockchain and then actually watch for the trading events. So I recommend Ethers.js for this, all right? So with Ethers, what you can do is actually monitor every single swap event that happens, okay? So that's, that's what you're doing. Every time a swap happens on the blockchain for the token pair that you're watching on the exchanges that you're watching, an event is going to be emitted or broadcast and you can subscribe to that to find out any time that a trade happens. Your bot's gonna hear that it's going to check the prices, okay, and it's going to determine can I profitably do an ARB with the fees and everything and do that calculation. If it can, it's going to call your smart contract and execute the trade. So with Ethers.js, you're going to use the contract.on function, okay? You're going to pass in the event that you're looking for. In this case, probably going to be swap if you use the exchanges that I mentioned. And then you get a callback, which basically is like, hey, whenever this happens, you know, run this code. And that's where you put in the code to actually do the trade to your contract. All right, so that's an overview of how to create a profitable crypto arbitrage bot in 2026. Now, if you want to steal my arbitrage bot, then make sure you hold your spot for the Trading Bot Masterclass next Thursday on January 22nd. Inside, I'm going to give away my arbitrage-based trading bot and show you how to set it up step-by-step. Step. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Hold your spot with the link down below. That's all we got for today. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to this video so you don't miss another one. And until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.